Okay, I call this not the 21 card trick, nor the 27 card trick. It's the 28 card trick. Okay, so I think you'll really enjoy this, especially if you find Fibonacci numbers fascinating, as most people do. So as you can see here, I have a good selection of cards, face value, number cards, cards of the four suits and so forth, kind of randomly mixed together, as you can see. In fact, since we saw the cards, why don't we begin to mix the cards um, so that no one knows where anything is. And one of the reasons for mixing the cards is to show you the, the principal shuffles that we'll be using today. Um, the first one's called the Klondike Shuffle. So this is where you take the top and bottom card off as one. So you may have seen this before. It's a great way of mixing the cards in a way that really no other shuffle accomplishes. Um, so top and bottom off is one. Okay, just like that. Very good. Uh, another great shuffle is just the simple left-right shuffle. Okay, um, so it really is a good way to scramble the cards and dealing that into three piles is great or four or more. That's great also. Okay, maybe we'll stack right on left. And then another one that will be kind of helpful for us today is uh, a seemingly simple one. It's called a 50% coding. Well, what that means, well, COAT stands for count out and transfer. So 50% of 28 cards is 14. So we just deal 14 cards to the table. That's all we do. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Drop the rest on top. Okay. Very, very good. Now, for the, for the first stage of this routine, we need uh, 12 cards. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out um, six pairs of cards. And I really wish you were here because, let me just move the remaining cards over here, off to the side. Um, I would have you tell me how you would like these picked up. Okay, maybe this one here, that one, bottom right, top center, bottom left, and the far left. Okay, that's just fine. And since we had them in pairs, why don't we go ahead and se separate those pairs. You might think there's something special about the pair, so we're going to just pull them apart <laughs> with random stacking. And how would you like this stacked? Left on right? Okay, very good. In fact, at this point, we can actually do a Charlier shuffle. Um, I meant to show you this at the beginning, but uh, this is a, a very good shuffle for mixing the cards. It's a top to bottom, bottom to top kind of shuffle. And why don't we apply our 50% coding one more time. Uh, see, now we have 12 cards, so we'll deal out six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Drop the rest on top. Now from here, we can deal out into uh, two piles, if you would like, with random stacking. You want left on right. We can do as many of those as you like. We really can. We can stay here till Christmas doing left-right shuffles with you deciding left on right or right on left. Uh, we can do as many uh, dealings into three piles as you would like with random stacking from left to right or right to left. Uh, we could even do four, okay? And we can do more than that even, but we don't want you to fall asleep. How would you like these stacked? Left to right? Okay, your choice. Uh, but we could do several more of those to do if you wanted me to do that. Now at this point, we'll use our Klondike Shuffle one final time. I'm going to Klondike pairs to the table, okay? And this is something we haven't done quite yet. Okay, there we go. And what we'll do is we'll just set aside these pairs uh, because we need some space. <laughs> need to make use. Okay, let me move the remaining cards. We'll need those. So let me just move these. I'm kind of looking at the camera here. <laughs> making sure I'm not going clear off the camera view. Okay, so here are our six, yeah, it looks like we can fit, barely, our six pairs. Okay, so we'll come back to those in a minute. Now, when it comes to Fibonacci numbers, as you know, the smallest one that's kind of of interest is the number two, right? So two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, and so forth. Okay. Now, we did put out cards into, into pairs here, so into groups of two. Um, so why don't we go ahead and just deal out, uh, let's say, three cards. And then, let's see, what's the next Fibonacci number after three? Uh, I believe it's five, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five. 
And what's the next Fibonacci number after five? Let's see, it's three plus five is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, perfect. Boy, that's a good sign, actually. Okay, so we have these sets of pairs of cards, or two cards. We have three cards here, we have five cards here, and eight cards here, okay? So there's kind of a Fibonacci quality to what we're doing here, okay? But that's not really the interesting part. The interesting part is the fact that the cards within these groupings actually add up to Fibonacci values. In fact, sitting here, unrevealed at this point are all nine Fibonacci values between 2 and 89. Okay, <laughs> is that possible? Let's take a look here. Okay, so I'm claiming that we have all nine Fibonacci values between 2 and 89 here. Okay, now a lot of people may not even realize 89 is a Fibonacci number, but I can show you that it is in just a moment. Um, okay, well, we got a couple of aces. They add up to two. That's the first Fibonacci number that's larger than two. Uh, oh, let's see. We have a, an ace counting as a one and a two. That's three. Three is a Fibonacci number. Um, oh, we have five over here. Uh, we have eight here. Thirteen there. And we even have 21 there. Check that out. Well, I promised you Fibonacci values all the way up to 89. Okay, we got up to 21. Well, remember, we put out a, a set of three cards. What do they add up to? Let's see. Kings 13, Queens 12. So that's 25 plus 9 is 34. That's the next Fibonacci value. <laughs> Uh, what's the next Fibonacci value after that? I don't know. Let's add the values and the sum will tell us the answer. Uh, okay, so queen 12 plus 11 is 23 plus 13, 36 plus 8, 44 plus 11, 55. <laughs> 55 is the next Fibonacci value. And now what about this packet of eight cards, which, you know, eight is a Fibonacci value in and of itself. Um, let's see, what do, we, what do we have here? We have a queen, 12, plus 10 is 22, plus 12 is 34, plus 10 is 44, plus jack is 55, plus a king, 68, plus 10 is 78, plus 11 is 89. <laughs> <laughs> Our last packet of eight cards have card values that add to 89. So indeed, we were able to generate all the Fibonacci values between 2 and 89 using a packet of 28 cards. And you saw how we mixed those cards and scrambled them put some out as pairs, sets of two, put a set out of size three, and then a set out of size five, and then a set of cards consisting of eight card values. And each one of these individual piles of various Fibonacci sizes add up to bona fide Fibonacci numbers. So that is the effect. So let's talk about um, how this is done so that you could do this if you would like to. So for those who need a reminder of what the Fibonacci values are between 2 and 89, I've listed them on the left-hand side of the screen. You may recall that each value is found by adding the previous two values. Now to arrive at the very first value, 2, you add the previous two values in the sequence, which is a 1 and a 1. But I chose not to list those because a sum of 1 for two cards is not possible using a deck of cards. Okay, so 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, the next Fibonacci value, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, 8 plus 13 is 21, 13 plus 21 is 34, 21 plus 34 is 55, and finally 34 and 55 is 89. And we were able to generate all nine of those Fibonacci values using a packet of 28 cards. Okay, so how did we pull that off? 
the shuffles that we will use within this routine are the Klondike, the left right shuffle into two, three, or four piles, a 50% coating, and a Charlier shuffle. For the Charlier shuffle, I can add a link in the description below that will show you how to perform that shuffle if you're not familiar with it. Okay, so here's the packet structure that I began with. It's not the only way to set it up, of course. Um, so right now the cards are in a bit of a mess, right? Um, but here is the structure on the far left, okay? View these as pairs because we'll be setting these out as pairs. So two aces, well, if each has value one, they add up to two. Um, two and an ace would add up to three. Three and a two, five, three and a five, eight, eight and a five, 13. King, 13, plus eight is 21. So I have these 12 cards at the top of the packet of 28 cards. Below those, I have these three cards, a nine, a queen, and a king, that add up to 34. Below those, I have a jack, eight, king, jack, queen, that add up to 55. And then the bottom eight cards are a jack, 10, king, jack, 10, queen, 10, queen. Okay, now the very top 12 cards, I think I scrambled the pairs if you looked at what I displayed. I didn't want it so obvious. So you can move the pairs around as pairs at the top. That won't hurt anything. And then with this packet of 28, if you just follow what I did, this will work perfectly every time. And maybe just to kind of step through what's going on. What I did was I did a KLRC shuffle, which in the case of stacking the right pile on top of the left of the LR shuffle constitutes the identity permutation. Okay, so really it's just to give the illusion of mixing the cards. So it's Klondike shuffle and then followed by the LR shuffle stacking right on left and then a 50% coating. So all of that gives the illusion that the cards are being scrambled, but it's actually in the identity permutation. Those, in some sense, those three shuffles cancel out each other, if you want to think about it that way, okay? Now with the left-right shuffling that we did, or into three piles or four piles, in the routine, I allowed you to stack from left to right or right to left, which is actually true. You, you can give the spectator that choice. But at the very beginning, when we do our first left-right, to achieve the identity permutation with those three shuffles, you need to stack the right on top of the left, okay? Now, it ends up that if you stack it the other way, we'll end up reversing the packet, which is not something that's impossible to overcome, actually. But, uh, but to keep it clean, just stack the right on left. The spectator won't even question that. And then you introduce to the spectator the 50% coding and tell them that simply requires us to count out half the cards and drop the rest on top. Half of 28 is 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 12, 13, 14, okay. So the Klondike followed by the left, right, which we stack the right pile on top of the left, followed by this 50% coding constitutes the identity permutation. So the cards are back to where they were at the beginning when we set them up according to the left-hand side of the screen there. Okay, so we haven't harmed anything, okay. So from there, what we did was we pushed off a pairs from the top now the top 12 cards are the special ones, right? Um, that's mentioned on the left there uh, in the write up. The remaining cards are just set aside. I'm running out of space here, but these are the remaining 16 that we'll need in a minute. Um, we allow the spectator to dictate how these are stacked. Okay, now technically what we have right here is something called an AMP, adjacent mirrored pairs. Okay, so that's something I talk about on my channel. And if you take such a structure and you deal those cards into two piles, it becomes a two cycle. Here it will be of cycle length six. So this is now a cyclic construction relative to those pairings. Well, since it's cyclic, you can perform, whoops, sorry, any cut or Charlier shuffle. Charlier shuffle actually just preserves cyclic structures and as I mentioned I'll put a link in the description below to the Charlie A shuffle you want to learn that and then from there we reminded the spectator of the 50% coding now in this case half the cards would be six 
out of the 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, drop the rest on top. You've now converted it to a mirrored structure. Once it's mirrored, you have the stay stack principle at your disposal. And that means that for every divisor of the packet size, you can deal the cards into that many piles and then randomly stack from left to right or right to left. And it won't change the fact that it's a quote mirrored packet. So we can deal into uh, two piles with random stacking decided by the spectator. Okay, you can do as many of those as you like. You really, really can. Uh, three is a divisor of 12, the packet size. So you can deal out into three piles, random stacking from left to right, right to left. You can do 20 more of those if you would like. Four is also a divisor. I'm running out of room here. Four is also a divisor of 12. So you can deal out into uh, four piles, random stacking from left to right or right to left. Okay, and you can do several more of those. Okay, and once you've done enough of those, the spectators feel confident that there's just no way anyone could know anything about these cards. You finish with a Klondike shuffle. Since this is mirrored, a Klondike shuffle will pull off the very pairs, the very pairs that we set out at the beginning. And these are the very pairs that have the special property mentioned at the top left-hand side of the screen, in our write-up, those top 12 cards, okay? So these six pairs are going to add up to the first six Fibonacci values, starting at two. And there, this is already set up to work for you, where uh, the top three, three's a Fibonacci number, uh, the top three cards will add up to the next Fibonacci value, which is 34. And then uh, the next five, which is a Fibonacci number as well, those add up to 55, which is the next Fibonacci value. And then the final eight, eight being a Fibonacci value, these cards actually have values that add up to the next Fibonacci value of 89. <laughs> so anyway, I know that's a lot to take in, but, um, but really you have all of the mechanics now for doing this and really surprise people, especially anyone who is familiar with the Fibonacci sequence. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.